Okay, we've started experimenting with some lighting effects. And I've got our test GP9 right here. There's our test GP9. It's got the Digitrax DH126D decoder in it. And now, when I built this, I never planned on putting headlights in it. So it's like jewels and stuff. But I want some way, I want a lighting effect of some kind. So what I did was I put a little yellow LED up here. Okay, I just drilled two holes and stuck it in there. And then I put some goop on the bottom of it, hold in place. And I want to show you what the result of that is. So let us hit function three on our Y throttle, our engine driver. Okay, can you see it? There is our rotary beacon. What I like about this rotary beacon is it is not annoying. If you have ever used the Circuitron blinking beacons, they are pretty darn bright and they can get to be annoying because they flash really bright and go off and then you flash really hard. But in JMRI, in Decoder Pro, you can look at a setting there's some choices of lights, and this is one of them, and I think that's pretty good. That's not bad. I'm going to show you how I did it, too. And I have it set to be non-directional, and I have it mapped to function 3. So, if I go forward, it stays on. If I reverse, it also stays on. That's what I want. This is a switch engine in an industrial park. Probably use the beacon quite a bit and then if I ever want to do something with low light operations and I don't want to put headlights in all these I've got a flashing beacon okay so let's look under the hood since I don't have the shell all the way on there let's look under the hood and see what's, what's going on okay so first let's take a look down here at the breadboard Okay, you see the, the light right there. It's on. Over here on the benchtop power supply, I've got 2.38 volts going. Power this thing is drawing is less than 0 .000 amps. And if we look right down on top of it, that's a pretty bright LED. Right here is a 1K resistor. So the way I have it set up from the bench top is I got red wire coming in, connecting to this little little jumper wire. Okay, just like that. Then it goes into the 1K resistor. There's the gold stripe is here. Comes out, goes through the LED, and then back out through the black wire. Right, and in LEDs, you when you look at them carefully, there is there are like two little parts to it. One of them is big, one of them is little. The big one we call the anvil. So in this setup I have right here, past the gold stripe, the next thing is the little piece, then the anvil, and then out out that way. All right, but that's not the way it is under this hood here. And I tried a bunch of different ways and I actually smoked a resistor doing this because I was not reading the diagram right. The diagram is in the actual Digitrax decoder manual and is not in the decoder instruction sheet that comes with it. And I don't have that thing totally. It's not, the goop is not set up. Yeah, that's all right. I'll fix it again later. All right, so here's what I did. Here's what we got in here. Take a look. Okay, so in this setup, I put a little disconnect, right? I can pull that. I can pull that out there, just like that. Okay, so it's a little two-pin thing. You get bags of like a hundred of them, and here's all the 
the little sockets they connect to. And then I made this is a PC board with three gaps or two gaps so it has three lines through it. Okay. And I put that, I took a little piece of styrene, put some goop on it, put it right there, so I could and then I cut off a piece and glued that to the styrene so that it would be up above the flywheels and I don't want to have, have any wires coming in getting caught up in the flywheel. Alright, so the way I wired it was then you can see this is the front end and I put yellow, blue, white. The blue is common to both the yellow and the white. The white one is the front is the front one, the yellow one is the back one by default. So I connected my two pin connector to the white and the blue. Then I took, now, let's see what did I do here. Okay, so the, so the black wire, did I do this right? Yeah, the black wire connects to the blue, right? Is that what I did? Let's find out. Yes. Why? I don't know why. The red wire is connected to the white. That's probably backwards. I'm thinking that is backwards, but this does work. Okay. So, the blue wire is connected to the black. The black wire is connected directly to the LED on the small side, which is probably the inside. The power in. So, I Usually I use black for, for the other way. It's backwards, but anyways, you're going to get the idea here. I've got white and blue. Okay, so if we're saying the power comes from the blue, it's going to go blue, go up to black. It's going to go in the little side of the LED. It's going to come out the LED. And then I put the resistor on the back side of the LED because that's what the Digitrax manual shows. So, yeah, it's going around. Because the gold stripe, it's like going through and it leaves on the gold stripe and comes back to the red wire and back in on the white connected to the red. That's it. It's, it's pretty simple wiring. And I definitely should have reversed. I reversed it so many times trying to figure out why I was doing it wrong. That ultimately got it to work, but it's not the way... That I want the wiring to be. I want the red wire to be on the blue and the black wire to be on the white. Anyways, let's just plug it back in. But this makes it nice. I to, now I got the shell off. Okay, look, I got rid of the bird's nest. This is still too much wire right here. And we're getting better on cleaning that up. But we don't need all that extra wire stuffed under here. I don't know what we're saving it for. Let's get that guy plugged in. So now on these two pin connectors, they have these two little locking nubs, and then I take an exacto knife and I, I cut them off. Because if you've ever dealt with these inside a computer, you know they can be very hard to get apart, and we don't want that. We want it to come apart easy. It's in the shell, basically like electricity, like household wiring. If it's in the box, leave it alone, and it'll be fine. This is in the box. So is this. I don't have these things all taped up and stuff. They're inside the shell. As long as they look, they're good like this, they will stay good. Okay. So now we got them plugged in. I put a little chapstick on it to make it smooth. There's a little circuit board here. So now we can put it back on. Actually lock them down. There we go. And now I got a little beacon right there. Let's put them on the track. Track currently is set to programming. And with DigiKice, as I think I already told you, the workbench is an industry on the layout. You leave the workbench over there and head on down the tracks. And you come in. And I have that toggle switch that changes it. We're in DC, DCC mode right now. I got toggle switch that changes it from layout DCC to programming track with the flip of a switch. And in DigiKice, the system 
even though this is a programming track, if a train comes down and crosses over into it, it'll still work just fine. Okay, so now, got it pulled up on engine driver. I have this map to function three as a rotary beacon. And that's something in Decoder Pro. You go under lights, and it gives you like all these choices. Basically, it says, for this uh, decoder, there's like five different choices. I have it set to to uh, it's on when you press the button when you press function three it's on it stays on it doesn't matter the direction of travel that's what I want there we go she's on and now we can move and it will just stay on it's looking a little crooked because I don't have it I don't have that glue set. I'll just that's the nice thing about goop is I'll just grab onto it with the tweezers and pull it off. But that is our first test of using the three this this three part PC board that I made by just grinding some some gaps in it. Now that we have this working, we can move on to more complex things. And I know I didn't give you a really good tutorial on doing it, but we are going to get into that. But at least we got a test run. And, and now you know that you saw what I did. You can do the same thing. So you should be basically set up for success you can start building parts for this to do your own thing and that rotary beacon function I really like that it does not annoy it's not too bright and it's not too dark just right so that's looking that's looking pretty good all right let's get this uploaded to you